Good morning, afternoon, or evening, wherever and whenever you are. My name is Benjamin, and welcome to another uh, Game Maker tutorial. Finally, I'm super excited for this one because we are going to do part two of my 3D RPG game, and uh, I'm also really excited for this video because, well, number one, I fixed the audio, I'm pretty sure. So the audio should be fixed from the last video. And number two, I'm excited because I have two monitors. So it's gonna make it way easier for me to record videos. Um, I My wife surprised me with a second monitor for Christmas, so that was pretty fun. Um, you can thank her because now I'll probably be making more videos because it'll be so much easier for me to record them. So, uh, let's jump right in and get started. Last time we left off, um, let me run this game. Hopefully it runs on the right screen. I'll still probably have to figure out some of these. Yeah, it looks like it ran on the other screen. But last time we left off, we, uh, we had our character with the cape and the shadows. And man, does this look good. Our game was looking pretty good for this 3D top-down RPG game we're building. Um, so, but now we need to add some trees in, and trees are part of what make the game look so 3D, is the, the way that I've got the trees set up. So the first thing we're going to do is, oh, and by the way, quick little thing, if you haven't seen the first video, I'm going to put a link right here somewhere, go and watch the first video, uh, and it also has a link to download all of the files and images and everything you need. To be able to do this so um, what we're going to create we're going to create an object and we're going to call it obj tree <clears throat> i actually optimized this quite a bit from how it was before we're going to add a event add a create event and come over to control and i learned a neat little trick the other day if you um, middle mouse click on this it drags it over and opens it up for you so that's a cool little trick that's in Game Maker, and we're gonna call this um, init initialize the tree. And let me open that up over here on my other screen. Oh, two screens is so awesome. This is the best thing ever. Um, so we're gonna create an array and this array is going to hold uh, we're actually going to create two arrays and these two arrays are going three actually I just realized we need one more so we're creating three arrays woohoo um, they're gonna hold the first one's gonna hold the um, a reference to the different sprites for the tree the second one's going to hold the different offsets for each layer of the tree because we need to have a specific offset um, in order to create that 3D effect. How much is the tree going to actually um, offset each image from the view's center point? And the last one is just an angle which is going to make the trees look a little bit different because each piece will have a different image angle. So let's start out with the leaves. Leaves 0 equals sprite leaves 1. Um, ch -ch -ch -ch. And I think there might actually be a mistake in my sprites. Yeah, some of these have SPRT, so leaves one does. You're going to want to take that out. Um, and that looks like it might be the only one. Sprite leaves one. I'm going to press. Okay, now, now it's showing up color as the right color. Leaves one equals sprite leaves two leaves two equals sprite leaves three ah so another thing this one's sprite leaf it should be sprite leaves um, and then down here this is sprite tree five it should be sprite leaves five that probably came from me creating the assets and just doing it kind of fast. So leaves um, three equals sprite, leaves four, and leaves 
4 equals sprite leaves 5. There. So um, if you've never used an array before, which probably most of you have, but if you haven't, an array is just like a variable that can have um, multiple values. And the values start out at 0. This is called the index, and they start at 0. So the first value is actually 0. And so that's why we have leaves 1 here, but 0 here, because this is the first leaf, and then this is the first index of the array, which is actually the 0 index. Now we're going to create another array called offset. And I'm actually just going to copy this down a few times because we're going to need five again. And we're just going to do one, two, three, four, like that. And then we're going to set this equal to 112, the first one. And you can also copy that down because we're just going to be modifying that value. So for, the, for number one, we're going to do divided by five times 4. For here we're going to do divided by 5 times 3. Here we're going to do divided by 5 times 2. And here we're just going to do divided by 5. Okay. Now don't ask me how I came up with these values. I honestly came up with these values just messing around with them. And so it was probably a few hours just messing around to get the values right for the 3D effect to look good. I just kept changing them until I got something that looked good. So we're going to do, uh, now we're going to do a for loop to create this last array. And the reason we're going to do that is because um, we can. <laughs> Honestly, we could actually probably use a for loop for this one, but I didn't. For var i equals zero i is less than 4 i plus plus. So this is going to and it through this uh, this is going to cycle loop through this array angle i equals random 360. So we're just creating come on. There we go a random value between 1 and 360, assigning it to an angle. And this is actually going to do a similar thing to up here, but it does it all in one line. Now we're going to create two more variables, and it's going to be called dirt equals 0 and dis equals 0. And they stand for direction and distance. I've just shortened them. Okay, that is all we need for the create event for our tree. Now we're going to add another one. Actually, let's give our tree a sprite, and we're going to give it uh, um, trees. We'll do leaves three, I guess. I don't know. You can do whatever you want, because that doesn't really matter. Um, that's just going to be for when we place it in the room, we can, we'll can we know that it's a tree. Now we're going to add a step event. And <clears throat> this is going to be a little bit complicated but it shouldn't be too bad. So drag over a code, and we're going to call this control the perspective of the leaves. And we're going to create three variables here, three um, local variables, var x view equals view x view view current, which is actually going to be zero because that's the only view we're going to be using. But view current var y view equals view y view view current var w view which is width view equals view w view view current var h view equals view h view view current so what does this do? Um, view x view is an array, and it gets the x position of. Ah, I forgot. We're gonna do divided by two on the end of each of these. So it gets the x position of whatever view um, index 
that we pass into the array. So view current would just be whatever view we're currently using, which in this case is only ever going to be zero. You could actually replace all these with zero, um, the first index, but this is just, just in case later if you were to add more views, it would be smart with the other views as well. Um, we're grabbing uh, the x and y position of the view, and then we're also grabbing the width and the height of the view, but we're dividing that by 2, and we're going to use these four values to calculate the center of the view, because if we have the x position and the y position, that's going to get us the top left corner of the view. But then if we add the width and add the height, we're going to get the exact center. Now we're going to do dis, which stands for distance, equals point direction x view plus w view, which is the width, y view plus h view, which is the height, and we're going to get our current position, which is x and y. So we're getting the distance from the center of the view to us, with, you know, the tree object that we are. Um, now we're going to do make sure we are in the room before we do anything. And we're going to use a value of 480. 480 isn't exact, but it works. If this is greater than 480, exit. So this is an optimization line for the code. It basically checks if the view's distance to this, or if the ob if the tree's distance to the center of the view is greater than 480 don't worry about any of the next thing. And why do we do that? Uh, just because it makes it so that we run less code. Because um, this will just exit out of this code and it won't run anything else after this line. And it just helps us to run less code for trees that aren't actually in the view because we don't care about them. We can't see them. We don't care what they look like. Dir equals point direction x view plus y view y sorry x view plus w view y view plus h view hopefully I spelled all those right x y so now we're just gonna um, get the direction to this view center so what does this do? It just gets the direction pointing from the center of the room to us. Now we're done with the step event and the last uh, event that we need to add to this object is the draw event. So let's add a draw event. And this is where we do all the fancy stuff. Basically the other places were just for setting stuff up. This is where we actually do the hard work to draw this and make it look 3D. But it's actually not too long, so draw the leaves according to the view location. And I'm going to maximize this because this is a big one. Exit if we are outside the view. Um, if this is greater than 480 exit the other one would only cancel out one line of code this one's gonna cancel out a lot of code because there's a for loop in here for every single tree inside the view so this line of code right here is actually going to help a lot with optimizing this process and making sure we're not worrying about drawing trees that are outside of the view um, so now we need to calculate the offsets. This is another line of code that don't ask me how I came up with this magic wizard formula, but it was literally just messing around. And what this does is it calculates the offset based on how far away the 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 object is from the view's center and how 
and what level we are. So you saw in the create event we had the different trees and we had a different value. It was like 112 divided by 5. 112 divided by 5 times 2. You know, those different offsets. It's going to use those offsets and also the distance. And it's going to use those two inputs to calculate how far we're actually going to offset. And then we're going to get an x and y position using that. So var, let's see. But we're going to do all of this in a for loop. For var i equals 0. i is less than 4. i plus plus. Okay, we're going to do it right here. var calc, this is the calculation, equals parentheses, dis, divided by 4, parentheses, times, 3 left parentheses, offset, brackets, i, times, negative 1, right parentheses, divided by 112, right parentheses, plus 1, right parentheses, semicolon. That's a big, long, giant formula, and I got that literally just messing around with these values until I came up with something that worked. Um, we're going to do var x dis equals length dir underscore x. Calc is the first input. Dir is the second input var y dis equals length dir underscore y calc dir. Okay, so what this does is it use our, uses our calculation variable and the distance to get, or sorry, and the direction to the center of the room to actually get an x and y coordinate off that we, offset that we need to draw. So length dir takes a distance, which is calc right now, and it takes a direction, and then it returns, um, if you do it for both the x and the y, it kind of turns a distance and a direction into a x and y coordinate system. So you're basically converting from um, the polar coordinate system, which is distance and direction, to uh, an x and y coordinate system and that's what length there does. You can also do this with trigonometry but length there uh, works. So draw the shadow var shadow calc and here's another big long ugly calculation. Um, there's going to be two here for the shadows because we draw two shadows. Um, offset i divided by 120 divided by 20. That one's not that bad, but we're going to do another one. Shadow offset equals, oh, let's see, three left parentheses, 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 offset i times negative one right parentheses divided by 112 right parentheses plus one right parenthesis times 80. Now we're going to, now the last part we get to draw three different things. We're going to draw the shadows and then we're going to actually draw each leaf. Um, so we're going to draw sprite ext leaves i um, let's see, leaves i image index x plus offset i divided by 8 y plus parentheses offset i divided by 8 1 1 angle i c black shadow calc um, plus point one parentheses semicolon. So we're just doing a normal draw sprite ext, but we're passing it um, the sprite. This grabs from the array that we created at the start leaves, and um, 
it'll draw the correct one because we're looping through it. Um, then we get the image index, our x plus a magical offset, y plus a magical offset, um, 1 for the um, x scale, the y scale is 1. The image angle grabs from the array we, we created in the create event. We're drawing this as black because it's a shadow, and then we're giving it this shadow calc. This is a little bit, this is a magical value for how dark to make the shadow. We're going to draw one more shadow. Draw a sprite. EXT. Actually, you can copy all of this down, but we're going to change some stuff. So just copy it down. We'll change some stuff. So instead of X plus this, we're going to do X plus shadow offset. I think I'm losing my voice. Oh my gosh. Okay, shadow offset. And instead of plus 0.1, it's plus. 0 point sorry it's plus point zero two five okay we're done with the shadows um, now we're gonna draw the actual leaves draw the leaves draw sprite ext leaves i image index x plus x dis remember we calculated that up here using the distance in the calculations y plus y dis 1 1 for the image for the x scale and the y scale angle i image blend which basically just means for the color we're going to draw whatever color we we are um, and then one for the alpha value because we want them to be all the way visible. Now let's save this and pray that it actually works because that was a lot of code and it's actually kind of complicated. Uh, really quickly, let me just explain. We make sure we're inside the view. If not, we exit so we don't have to do all this complicated calculations. If we are in the view, we step through each level of the tree starting with the with the with the base and going all the way to the top level and I've got five levels. With each level we calculate a different offset based on our distance and based on the offset from the array that we created at the start. And using that calculation we can calculate an x and y coordinate for where we should draw this, op this um, uh, sprite. Then we draw the shadow based on a bunch of complicated calculations and we draw them with you know, we draw them as black with slight um, alpha values. Then we draw the leaves, and in this part we draw just a, just the normal leaf using the x and y distance that we calculated the start up here at the start, and using an image angle and just a value of one. And we draw whatever leaf we're on, whether it's the first or the fifth one, and that's how that works. So let's go into our room and we might not have a view yet. So go to views. Um, it looks like we do have a view. Um, but our room is tiny. So the view doesn't even really matter. Let's go into settings and let's make this room bigger. I'm going to do 1280 by 720 so I'm just doubling the room size and now I'm gonna put some trees in the room let's get our tree object I can have a tree here a tree here a tree here maybe a couple there actually um, I just put a few in the room we'll save it and press play Okay, so it tried to run it over here on this side of the screen. I got an error message. It says variable get y view h view underscore h view. And this is in the step event for our object tree. And it's action number one, so the first action. And it's at um, it doesn't give us a line value, it doesn't look like, but 
somewhere we've written y view underscore h view and it doesn't know what that is and it's because I probably meant to press or I probably meant to do y view plus h view and I did underscore on accident and you can actually see right here oh it says line 13 line 13 I'd like you guys to be able to read error messages because I get a lot of comments from you guys saying what does this error mean so I'm kinda of showing you how to read them line 13 um, we have this dir equals point direction and you can see that I did y view underscore h view when I should have done y view plus h view so we're going to abort I'm going to go into our tree into the step event into the first action we're going to go to line 13 because that's where it told us to go and then here we're going to go over and we're going to see oh yeah y view underscore h view that should have been a plus and easy easy to fix so let's run this again let me drag it over and move around and you can see the trees actually are not working right they sort of look 3D but it's not quite working how it should see they're kinda jumping around and I'm not sure why so let's go look at that I'm gonna compare my codes here Two divided by five angle dir and dis okay that all looks good come into the step event x view plus width y view plus height x and y x view plus width y view plus height x and y divided by 2 divided by 2 this is height and width height and width x and y x and y all of this looks good to me so my guess is it's somewhere in our dry event it's possible I messed up one of the calculations or something this looks good calculation equals dis divided by 4 times parenthesis 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 offset times negative 1 divided by 112 plus 1 that looks good image blend So this all looks good still. Times 80. Oh, yeah, the shadow shouldn't matter. It's got to be something in here. This is the distance. Ah, yes. Distance. See what I did? I did point direction instead of point and distance. Okay. I was really worried that I was never going to find this mistake. <laughs> so yeah. Point distance. You don't get a distance using point direction. You get a distance using point distance. So that was just a typo on my part. Um, let's run this one more time and see if it works now. That was why the trees were being a little crazy because my distance calculation was off so here we go this looks how it's supposed to We've got some really cool looking 3d trees um, interesting thing the depth doesn't quite work how I would or the depth works but not on the actual leaves so the way I had it before, I had the leaves with objects, and you can see we're getting depth issues. Well, obviously, we're going above the trees, so let's fix that real quick. Um, our player is 
negative 7. So let's make the trees negative 10. Um, I wish I could change my depth inside of the dry vent. I might have to mess around with that later and put it in another tutorial video. Um, because we've we've got you can see we've got a little bit of some some depth issues with trees right next to each other. It doesn't look quite right. Uh, the trees that are off on their own look really good though. Our player can walk under them. So in the next part, I will be doing um, making the trees go transparent when you walk under them. And I'll also fix this little depth issue that we're having where like this tree goes on top of this tree like that. And that doesn't look very good. So we'll fix those two things. But thank you guys for watching. I really appreciate your support. Make sure and like, favorite, and subscribe. Share this video on Twitter. That always makes me happy when I see people sharing my videos on Twitter. Um, and I can tell that they're helpful to them. So thank you guys so much. And I will talk to you guys later.